So we have our IP, our RP, and our subject. The RP has a private key. I'm drawing that in blue. And I'm drawing it inside the RP. And it has a public key, which I'm drawing outside the RP to represent the fact that it's public. The IP in red has a public key and a private key, which I'm drawing inside the RP to represent that it's public. Oh, it's private, sorry. The public key of the IP needs to be made available to the RP. It's going to need this later in order to validate the signature. And the public key of the RP needs to be made available to the IP so that it can encrypt the token that's going to eventually be sent from IP to RP. So, the IP creates a SAML 1.1 token and puts the claims into it. First name, last name, email. At the same time, it creates another token called the display token, which optionally creates this token, which contains the same claims, first name, last name, and email. The two tokens contain the same claims. Now, because the display token will eventually be encrypted in such a way that only the RP can read it, the display token is needed to show the user what claims they will eventually be forwarding to the RP. We use the private key of the IP to apply a digital signature to the SAML 1.1 token. Now this is needed so that we can uh, assure the RP that it was genuinely the, um, the IP that created the token in the first place. And then we use the public key of the RP to encrypt the token. Now of course the relying party has the corresponding private key which it keeps private and can therefore decrypt the token. So what we have is a token which we can use the red public key ticked here on the RP side to check the digital signature and we can use the private key of the RP to decrypt the message, to decrypt the token. So both of these tokens are put into a message and the message is called an RSTR, a Request Security Token Response. It's one of the WS Trust messages and that message is forwarded to the client. So now the client has the message. Now the client will typically want to see what they're about to forward and so they will extract the display token from that message. First name, last name, email. So that gets extracted from the message. Remember what's inside here is the actual token, the SAML token with its first name, last name and email claims and that it has been signed using the red private key of the identity provider and it's also been encrypted using the blue public key of the relying party. So let's imagine the user has looked at the contents of the display token in the UI and has decided, so that, that it's been displayed in the UI and it decided they're happy to forward that token to the relying party. So the token is forwarded, but at the moment it's a signed and encrypted data structure. So we need to undo, we need to reverse that process. We've got our first name, last name and email claims inside the, um, the token. And remember it's signed in red and it's encrypted in blue. That's just to represent the keys that we used to perform these actions. So Let's validate the signature. What we need to do is have a procedure for validating signatures and, um, and there is such a procedure which is available in the Geneva Framework and it's also in WCF. So we'll validate the signature and to validate the signature we need the public key of the IP and we need the token itself. By passing both of those into the validate signature procedure we can end up with a true or false. Is this signature valid? In other words, did the IP create this 
token and has it been mod and has it not been modified in transit so what we get out of the bottom end of this procedure is our token with our three claims first name last name and email and we want to now decrypt the token so we'll find a decryption algorithm and we'll in fact use the RSA public private key decryption algorithm and that requires two inputs it requires the token itself and it requires the private decryption key so we'll take the private decryption key from the relying party remember it only made the public part of the key available to the IP and then we'll get out of the bottom our plain text claims and those plain text claims can then be used for anything the interesting thing about the claims of course is that we know they came from the IP because we checked the digital signature and we know nobody could snoop on the conversation because it was encrypted so we looked at the three main topics and we introduced the idea of phishing and fraud the idea of typing usernames and passwords into web pages how that was a bad idea because websites are under the control of somebody else not you locally and so the idea of typing something into a web page which has been created by somebody else and presented to you to look like a website that you know maybe your online banking site or in many cases doesn't even have to look um, convincing that's generally a bad idea and so what we did was we had a look at some alternatives so we looked at the idea of the identity layer and we know that the identity layer came from a thing, a piece of work called the seven laws of identity penned uh, in in essence by Kim Cameron and contributed by many people across the internet who are involved in this work and um, as far as information cards and the Microsoft product card space is concerned the two areas which are heavily addressed by card space on the human side are human integration and a consistent experience across contexts so that no matter what website you go to the experience of logging into the website is always the same the credentials you might use the cards you might use might be different but the experience is always the same and then finally we looked at some of the concepts of the identity meta system and the identity meta system remember was not a product it's a collection of protocols centered around WS trust but in embodying also um, WS metadata exchange, WS policy, WS security policy and so on and we also introduced the three players in this game of using the identity meta system that's the IP the identity provider the RP the relying party and the user and remember the IP uh, implemented a service a web service called a security token service or an STS which the user interacted with and the RP um, that implemented um, in the case of a website an object tag in the case of a web service there would be policy um, which specified what it is that it needed from the IP in order to give a service to the user and remember there was a software component that, that ran on the user's computer and that was known as an identity selector in the case of Microsoft that identity selector is called Windows card space and um, that's available on Windows XP Service Pack 2 if you download the .NET Framework 3.0 or higher and on Windows Vista that is uh, just built into the product okay hope you enjoyed the talk and thanks for listening